John Cabot Zinn once said, the little things, the little moments, they aren't little. I think that many of us have been learning that lesson over the past few weeks. Learning the value of things, of time spent with family, of time spent virtually with friends, of what's important, what isn't. The little things, the little moments, they aren't little. In the 19th chapter of the Acts of the Apostles, the Apostle Paul is in Ephesus, and, and he's dealing with the people who are focused on the wrong things. The people of Ephesus that Paul encountered were passionate about maintaining the prestige of their patron goddess, Artemis. The temple of Artemis, also known as the Temple of Diana, was one of the seven wonders of the ancient world. The temple was built and destroyed and, and rebuilt over time. And the third and final temple was built, well, it was started in 326 B.C., and it was destroyed in 268 A.D., so, of all the temples, you combine them all, and for over a thousand years, the worship of Artemis was as much of a part of the city of Ephesus' culture and their identity, so, well, as love and sweet tea and, and barbecue is, is part of our identity and our culture. And just like buying Elvis on black velvet in order to keep his memory alive, well, in, in Ephesus, the silversmiths would make these statues of Artemis in silver, and they were beautiful, and they would sell them so that they could keep people focused. They could keep the memory alive of, of the goddess and her temple. And they knew that if, if people started believing in Paul's God instead of their man-made idol, well, their income would suffer. That idea caused the people to riot. They began to scream and shout, and, and they wouldn't listen. They wouldn't hear what Paul was saying and the others were saying. They just would kept shouting louder and louder, and they kept going on and on and on for two hours. They didn't want life as they knew it disrupted by Paul and his God. Oh, we don't either, do we? Sometimes we scream and shout so that we don't have to listen and hear so that our lives won't get disrupted by God, by the teachings of Paul. While we may not be buying silver statues and we may not be setting up shrines in our houses, we have plenty of false gods on our own, don't we? One of the most prevalent gods is the unquenchable desire for more. More money, bigger home, nicer car, more, more, more. And Jesus understood the, the pull of materialism on us and, and he understood the power that that can have on our hearts. And, and so in, in the scripture, in Matthew's gospel, in the longest sermon that Jesus preached in, 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 the, in the record of the gospel stories, in his longest sermon, he warned his followers saying, no one can serve two masters. Either he'll hate one master and love the other, or he'll be devoted to one and he will despise the other. You cannot serve God and money. Jesus knew it. Paul knew it. And if we're honest, we know it too. What we've probably found over the past few weeks is it's not the stuff that matters. Life can be simpler. We can have moments that are powerful. It's not the stuff that matters. Those false idols that we've created, that we've allowed to have control over our lives, they aren't worth the amount of our life that they cost us. What are the idols that you have created in your life? that you've allowed to control or to influence your life? And, and how would your life have to change in order to break that habit of worshiping that idol? And if you broke the habit, how would your life change? What would be different? What does it mean to, to value God 
more than material possessions and money? How do your, your budget and, and priorities need to change to make God your most valued treasure? The little things, the little moments, they, they aren't little. Don't waste your life worshiping at the altar of false gods and miss the moments. Miss the moments that help you live as the disciple of Jesus Christ. Miss the moments that allow you to have an impact on the people in your life. Miss the moments that help you to be able to give and to share with others in need. Miss the moments to be faithful. Don't waste your life worshiping false idols. Invest your life worshiping God. Because when you do, then God helps you live a life that makes a difference. In your life, in the lives you touch, in the kingdom. May God bless you.